Okay, here we are, 2013 Street Triple R. R. It's first of what I call the new shape. It's only 182 kilos, which is quite light. Seat height wise, I'm 5 foot 8, I can touch the floor with the flat of my foot, that's good. It's got the ABS option fitted, this one has, with the alarm and it's also got the extra little little screen just there. It's got the fully adjustable suspension on it, front and back. It's in the lovely metallic white. I'll let you into a secret, my Tuono was actually this white. It wasn't the uh, Aprilia white. Apparently the 2013 model has been improved um, for town friendliness. It's got taller gearing on it, different throttle bodies, but we'll see how that goes. It's got a reconfigured subframe apparently as well, because the exhausts on the old Street Triple R were underneath here. And now, you can see it's just there, look. 106 horsepower. It's also got the uh, little bit more tucked in headlights. If you looked at the old models, the headlights were quite far out and uh, I think they were a bit lower down, I'm not sure. They've moved them either up and in or down and in, one or the other. But I still think it looks like Dame Edna Everage. Or Wally. If you've ever seen that. The exhaust is lower and lighter, so the centre of gravity is a bit lower down, and apparently you're saving a few kilos. The rear end's a bit lighter as well, so apparently the, the balance of weight of this has been moved over to the front a little bit as well. And it's also got a slightly tighter turning circle than the older model. So there we go, and apparently they say that there's some room or storage underneath the seat, but I'm not going to be bothered to, to take the seat off. So that's the torque through on it, and also when you turn it on, it's got what we call little neat neeks. Some people have complained about this being in the way, but I've not found it's a problem to be honest. If you have a listen to this, oh, I have to pull one of the levers in, oh, here we go then, lever in and down to how it rides. Seating position is very similar to the Tuono. It's a little bit uh, backside up in the air. And the bars, even though they're high bars, are still a little bit forward. But the, uh, the comfort on this is pretty good actually. The seat's nice and padded. One thing I must say while I think about it, this is the third Triumph I've ridden now with um, tightened steering it's almost like the factory have over tightened the steering on that and it needs loosening off a little bit because once you've been out for a faster run when you slow down you can you can actually feel it weaving and like the steering's too tight so if anybody from Triumph's watching this can you please comment and let me know because it's now the third new Triumph that I've ridden where the steering is too tight okay I'm gonna slow down a bit because this is the 60 limit I want you to listen to this are you ready you're ready to be addicted. Ready? <laughs> oh, wow. I tell you, the induction roar on this is addictive. It's got a standard exhaust on it. But when you open this throttle up, it's sucking litres of air into the airbox. Absolutely addictive. Anybody else that's got one of these will uh, be able to uh, associate with it. Definitely. Uh, throttle, it's quite uh, a sharp, light throttle, but it's not, so I understand, one of these fly-by-wire throttles, so it's a direct cable link to the uh, butterflies on the fuel injection system, which is actually quite nice because there's no sudden jerk when you open the throttle. It is very fine though, very fine. But you can get around that on this by being in top gear at 30 miles an hour if you want. I mean, I'm slowing down again. I'm putting it into sixth gear. 
I'm going down the hill a little bit here, but let's slow it down a bit. Let's do 25, okay? Watch this. And that pulls really, really cleanly. So if you didn't want to uh, have any jerkiness while you're going into town traffic, then you can put it in a, a much higher gear and it'll be fine. The brakes on it are phenomenally good. Absolutely superb. The bike's got the ABS, but again, I've, I've braked heavily on this on purpose just to see what it's like. And there's no hint of the ABS coming in. So it's going to basically be there in case, you know, if everything else messes up. Yes, you're welcome. So the ABS is great, the brakes have got a really nice feel to them. The gearbox is actually lighter than on my Tiger. So I'm in third gear at 31. I'm going to hold it in third, it's at low revs at 4000. When I listen to this... <laughs> oh, it's just the most gorgeous sound. I mean the engines on these Triumphs anyway have got the, a beautiful whistle to them but the gearbox is ever so light, the clutch is light on it, clutchless gear changing on this is a doddle. The mirrors, you can only see half of your elbows, or half of the mirrors rather, your elbows are in the way, so that's a little bit of a complaint there. And also it's around 6,000 revs to 7,000. Um, you can feel a bit of vibration through the bars, but not necessarily through the foot pegs. See? Look at the way it handles, it's just so sharp. A couple of times I've noticed it seems to want to understeer a little bit. It feels like there's a little bit too much air in the front tyre, but that's not it. I think it's because the steering's quite steep. The ride is quite firm. When some people have complained about the ride, bear in mind I've had a Tuono, which is like riding a rock. So, you know, the ride is, is a firmer ride than normal but with the softer seat it actually takes away a little bit of the pain. But it's also a really, really nice looking bike. But my argument, in fact, I think I was actually on this road going the other way when I said this. I was talking about, do you really need a 1000cc plus bike on today's roads? And I'm not talking about being able to handle the power and none of the, none of the ego bullcrap like that. I'm talking about the frustration you feel when you've got something that's the power of a Bugatti Veyron, but you're stuck in traffic all the time and you can't get the most out of it. I think the best example I've used is uh, doing donkey rides on a racehorse. It's just, you just can't get the best out of the bike apart from on the track. But this 675, when you open it up, it doesn't half shift. It's really, really quick. But also, you'd be able to take this a little bit more up to its limits than you would on a 1000cc. Because on a 1000, you'd just be running out of road all the time. On this, you actually feel like you're achieving a little bit more. It certainly excites me more than the uh, Speed Triple did. Because I found this has got such a wow factor to it. It is such fun to ride. But something else I forgot to mention is that they've uh, made the gearing a little bit taller. So first gear just goes on that little bit longer, which makes the revs a bit lower when you change to second in town traffic. I mean, I'm in third gear now doing 35. And the fuel injection mapping, which is one of my biggest pet hates, is actually almost bang on. It's as good as I can expect any fuel injection to be. So I'm just going to have to say to you lot that are looking at buying a Streets Triple R, go and buy it. What an absolutely fantastic, fun, light, happy puppy, waggy taily piece of kit this is. It lights you up where when I rode the Speed Triple, unfortunately, the standard Speed Triple, the 2011 model, didn't do it for me. But this one is just so much fun. But in defence of the Speed Triple, I did ride it back to back with the Tuono, so that might have given me the, um, you know, the lower marks of it sort of thing. So there you go. Feel free to ask any questions. I hope I've covered everything that I need to cover. I'll speak to you soon.